Any any concerns with the agenda or request to move any items? Hearing none, we'll deem it approved. Comments from the chair? So there was a presentation by Ed McMahon that I missed, but I understand a few of us did attend. Mm -hmm. Do you want to give us a quick summary of it? Or Once I heard it was pretty, it was effective. Basically, he was talking about creating unique cities and making sure that these cities um, really drew on the aspects that um, would keep them sustainable and enlivened. And um, actually, I mean, I've heard that I've heard it all before. So maybe Kirby would might be a better respondent because he was probably newer to you. Uh, yeah. Well, I thought I thought it was great. Um, like you were saying, the it was really oriented oriented towards trying to, to talk to towns and let them know what's attractive to get people to move there. I felt like Montpelier had a, most of the things that he talked about going for it. Um, I think openness was one that he mentioned that I thought was an area that we talked about trying to improve. Um, there was actually some pictures of Montpelier. In the well, yeah, he purposely <laughs> he did that because he was presenting in Montpelier. But I and think there his was some of Burlington, yeah, yeah, and some of Burlington, yeah. I mean, the thing I think that comes out glaringly is is as he was pointing out the uh, San Antonio River Walk and all of that. That what we're not doing is taking advantage of the mm -hmm. amenity of the river and the confluence particularly. Yeah, that's a good point. He also said that they should have, we should, well, not we should, but many cities have adopted public art that is somehow related to something they either manufactured there or were known for. Um, what were some examples? A lot of cities were, have... There were monuments of mm -hmm. local folks, a local farmer that had the big farm instead of General Custer or somebody. Right, was, yeah, you know, yeah. It was, I mean, I think the real thrust of it was that if a town develops a sense of uniqueness in the place, it thrives. If it's just schlock like every place else in the world, and nobody wants to be there, there's, there's nothing unique about the design or the organization or the access to beauty, frankly, some kind of decent views and uh, the outdoors in a way that people can relate to it, then towns thrive. Um, and if the only thing you can think of is how cheap can you build something, pretty soon your town will suffer because it will look like every other piece of crap in the United States and nobody wants to live there. <laughs> uh, it was very... Hmm. I thought, and then Barbara came up with a, a um, video clip that was very similar, which I sent to everybody. Yeah. I think Did you send it out to everyone? No, no, no okay. I didn't. Yeah. I thought we could talk about it. Yeah, I and, thought you. And then we could, I mean, if we want to watch it or invite others. Or you could watch it at home. I thought yeah. that I don't know enough about the uh, competition for the downtown space. Whatever you call it, I. You mean I the asleep. one that happened? I was asleep when all that. Team Bridges. The um, sustainable Montpelier, Montpelier yeah. 2030. It has not a lot of different names, but. And what, what little I, I gleaned from that was it was exactly what McMahon was talking about was to design the downtown and make it unique. Use what's there already because it's attracted people for centuries, so don't knock it down. It will continue to attract people. Build more uh, a sense where people feel comfortable. And personally, I've been struggling with, a, as has unfortunately the Historic Preservation Commission, is what is a sense of place? Mm -hmm. We say it, but and said it, I thought, quite um, powerfully. And it 
it was recorded on this, it was I Wrote You. I think Barbara's, uh, I think it would be wonderful to replay that lecture before our kickoff meeting. Is, uh, anybody want to know what um, a man had to say, come early and show the show? because I think it's exactly what the city plan is all about. And it hadn't, it hadn't motivated me to see that there was a unifying theme until I heard the man lay it out for me. And it all works together in a way. It isn't just old buildings. But it's a consistent design and interest in the spaces that we've come to appreciate. And that's what the city plan should be doing, as far as I'm open space, wildlife, trees, rivers, all the stuff Density. that makes this city worthwhile that need to be emphasized and uh, supported in some way. And that was a very illustrative lecture and uh, it is recorded. Yeah, I'm not sure who's who has that. These, these folks. Oh, it's on ORCA. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right. So ORCA has it. And I don't get ORCA at home. It's too complicated because I'm, I'm on the dish and I think you have to be hooked to that. Uh, I think ORCA's online though. The YouTube channel for ORCA Media is easy to access. It's, it's hard to pull yourself away for an hour and think creatively about something because most of us only have five minutes to do that. And, but if you can, uh, McMahon gives a very cogent and I thought powerful talk about what is a sense of place, what is it that makes a town particularly in Montpelier Alive. Why do people like to be here? What is it? What is the essence of why people like to be here? Um, and that, that theme, it seems to me, should be built into everything that the plan's talking about. I think, I mean, I think part of what he was trying to, to talk about was just assuming that you want people to be to, to come to your place. That's the point of the uniqueness and the point of, of what he's laying out. For one thing, what you're saying, yeah, we'd be careful not to take it for granted that Montpelier already has so much of it. Uh, but also the thing that, that occurred to me while, while watching it is that we in many ways have a problem the opposite problem of what he was talking about by having such a demand for our uniqueness and then not having, not everyone who wants to be a part of it is, is able to live here. Um, and so I thought that was, an, I think well, it's a unique we situation. We can't meet the demand. Most, uh, most towns would love to have Montpelier's problem of, yeah, of having too much demand for your, for what you are. Uh, but uh, you're absolutely right about, yeah. don't take that for granted, we have to preserve it. Well, the thrust of his lecture is good planning is the best thing you can do economically for your city. It makes money for people because they like to be here. I mean, looking across the street at both vacant buildings, I mean, they're a casualty of two things, the flood and the internet. You would think good design could cure those problems. One of his suggestions was um, keep the retail downstairs and put living spaces upstairs because, as you say, people want to be here. And uh, the flood problem is a pretty serious impediment to developing the downtown. But the city center did it. Everybody looks at what the hell is that thing on that platform for? Well, it was smart. They were really smart, yeah. <laughs> and 
Yeah. So some designs like that have got to be incorporated in what we do because otherwise what holds the town together will be lost. I thought one of the interesting things <laughs> was Waffle House setting up a outlet on the street level and four levels of uh, living spaces above it. And pretty soon the uh, Waffle House business in downtown was four or five times what it was out in the drive-in at the edge of town. Yeah. I mean, duh. All yeah, the people that are going to buy your stuff are living right in. upstairs. Hmm. Yeah. And why would you put the college up on the hill if you had a chance to put it downtown? Wouldn't you love to have a bunch of young people looking around for things to buy and friends to see and restaurant? I mean, it, it, he had lots of examples like that of cities that had brought in community college branches uh, um, that really revitalized a town that was on the verge of, of disappearing. Um, so, but I think a big part of his point too was to recognize what your amenities are and yeah, then absolutely. to capitalize on those. And he didn't specifically talk about our issue with the fluctuating population that we undergo, which I would have been interested to hear him talk about that, that, you know, when the state workers come, all of a sudden we're, instead of a city of 8,000, we're a city of 10,000, um, but it's, it's not permanent. And this past weekend, actually, I went to a tiny house festival in Brattleboro. And Brattleboro is an interesting town of 12,000. And it's, it's amazing what the significant difference is mm -hmm. between just having that additional 3,000 people. I think one thing he would say, just based off of just what the themes in his presentation are that we should those people who live in town should live, or those people who work in town should live in town. Yes, and that, yeah. that, that because he did talk a lot about having the, your workforce living in your downtown yeah. and all that. Um, right now, it's just impossible. Well, it's a yeah. weird scenario, right? Like you said, we have more people who work here yeah. than could possibly live here. Yeah. Right. Just part of the challenge. Right. So that's that's the challenge of creating more housing in the downtown but area. People, we have people that would want to live here if we could figure out how to do it. Which right. Is, which is huge. We can capitalize on that. Yeah. Well, that's the city plan for the next uh, 20 years. Let's yeah. Go with it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so I made a note for myself to bring this up when we get to item five when we talk about the kickoff meeting. Mm -hmm. So we can take up your suggestion then. Okay. Did, I mean, did, I'm, just, I'm just saying make it available. Yeah, yeah. Did you get a chance to see the video I sent out? I'm not sure how long the clip was. Uh, was I liked it. Did you see it? Okay. It was just on that one city in California, right? No, I didn't. Yeah, Sassoon City, yeah. California, basically. It, it was short. It was 15 minutes. Right, close. okay. All right. But it didn't include anything on Portland or any of the other cities. Okay, because two of the cities he mentioned were actually mentioned in this film because it was a AIA Foundation uh, film that was put together looking at three different cities and their re different revitalization um, um, efforts. But this... What does AIA stand for? Oh, sorry, American Institute of Architects. The foundation, um, I mean, it could have been taken directly from his talk. But what it did was it interviewed people in each of the three cities. Have you seen that? I didn't get a chance to it's called open back it, from the, look at it. The whole thing is called Back from the Brink, yeah. Saving some America's Cities by Design. And uh, so two of the cities he referenced, Chattanooga was one of the other ones. And um, So what I'll do after this meeting is I'll send out a link to your video. The, well, the, not your video, but the AI. The piece. Video. Well, yeah, it's just a piece of it. Okay, video excerpt. And then um, I'll see if I can track down the Ed McMahon talk on mm -hmm. local media yeah. and circulate that so that the people who missed it can check it out. And he's from the Urban Land Institute, so just to give him some qualifications. Yeah. He's not just walking in off the street. Right, but. right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just a quick question. What were the other two cities that? mentioned Chattanooga in the AII? It's the uh, Susun City, California, oh, which yeah. was basically bringing it from the ashes, literally. Yeah. Are you familiar with that? I'm, I know Susun City, yeah. Yeah. Um, first voted the worst place to live in California, Southern California. And, yeah. and 
Yeah, so they've really done a huge revitalization, and a lot of what they did used to do that were TIF funds. Okay. Um, and then Chattanooga, and then Portland, Oregon. Okay. Looking at you know a successful city and mixing in all income levels in their housing efforts. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it's it's an interesting. Yeah, video. Was, was this a recent one, um, or how how? It's how probably. Did Google it? Yeah, it's probably 15 years old. Okay. One thing Chattanooga does is uh, it's just free Wi-Fi citywide. Oh yeah. By the way, ah. which is, I mean we're not that big geographically. That could be something to think about. Well, we voted in March to explore that, right? Yeah, I with the, that. that company. Yeah. yeah. Which that wouldn't be free. That would just be like public internet, basically. Yeah. So not quite the same, but something citywide. Um, I don't know if anyone got a chance to go to the regional, the second item I wanted to talk about was the regional planning commission, um, I knew there was a vote, and I don't know, I know you had a family emergency. Right, Mike made it. Did, but you didn't make it? Yeah, I did make that one, yeah. So. Can you give us a quick, um, uh, So they, they did, they passed the regional energy plan, which was the big item that they needed to get everybody there for to get. 70 because it requires a 70 percent vote i think to pass of the municipality so you have to make sure not of who's president but so they had to make sure they got enough votes so i went to that one i mean there was some i mean it was an interesting meeting a certainly interesting discussion and then they got into some discussions about kind of more nitty-gritty discussions about how they were going to handle a question on preferred siting of, in order to get the, the adder, and you're going to probably correct me if I'm wrong, in order to get the adder for the, um, just blanking on the, for the rollback for the meters. Oh. It, net metering. Net metering. Net me so for the net metering to get the adder, it has to be only on preferred sites. Only on preferred sites. Only on preferred sites. And because the and then there's a list of the preferred sites of that the state has established. And then there's one provision in there that kind of goes and says if a local planning commission and local select board or city council approves with the approval of the regional planning commission, then a separate site can also be designated as a preferred site and get the adding bonus. So because most municipalities don't have the compliant plans yet, and the regional plan was very um, conservative in where they outlined for preferred sites, a lot of these net metering projects are not qualifying, and therefore in some cases they can't get approved at all, and in other cases they just don't get the adder. So one way of fixing that is to go through and get this fix by getting the local in Worcester, Berrytown, and one other community actually have projects that need to get regional approval. They already have local planning commission approval, they already have select board approval, but we don't have a process to approve at the regional level. So they just wanted to go through and say, is it okay if we have our project review committee approve them based on our newly adopted regional plan? And yeah. these were municipal projects? Nope, these were just, I think that some of them may be municipal projects, but I think there was a requirement for a lot of net metering. Because that, we didn't talk about that at the Energy Committee, subcommittee at all. It was, yeah, it's one, yeah. I, it's my understanding is it's, it's a change that came up in the legislature, and so with the expiration of these Adders, then in order to get in order to get these additional yeah there it's been changing year to year and so there was another change as or will be as of July 1 which yeah. will be a change um, I'm surprised about the preferred site piece um, just because preferred sites were not that specific in the regional plan yeah and that's the, the mean, issue those, is because they aren't specific were, those yeah. maps were incredibly um, vague 
Yeah, and because they aren't specific, that becomes the issue. If you're if you're on a on an old gravel pit or you're on a brownfield, then you meet the state definition of a preferred site. But if you're not, if you're just have a three acre field that you want to go and put, you know, a 500 kilowatt net meter project on, group net meter project on, you won't get the additional adder because it's not a preferred site. But it could be a preferred site if you get the Planning Commission Select Board and Regional Planning Commission approval, and then you can qualify for the adder. And again, I may not have it 100% yeah. per. I hadn't heard about this until they kind of presented it at, at the RPC. Meeting. I have neither, so, and, and I, we have not discussed it in the Energy it, Committee. So that's why I'm it wondering. It could be worth checking in with Eric and, um, or Claire, because Eric's leaving the Regional Planning Commission, but Claire maybe might be able to help okay. you out to get the details of why. The, but it was really specific and a lot of discussion about whether we should allow the, the and eventually they did vote to support to let the project review committee approve preferred sites. Whose project review committee? The regional planning commission. Okay. So the RPC regional project review committee has the authority to review individual applications. So once you already have planning commission, local planning commission and local select board approval, you can then come to the regional planning commission and request regional approval of that and my thought was for the for a, the overwhelming majority of these you know even our 500 kw was only on three acres yeah so i mean it really it's not going to be a significant regional impact that as a representative of the regional planning commission i couldn't see why we would be opposing a majority of these projects if if a local municipality is okay with one on the planning commission and the select board it would seem very difficult for me to see this not unless it is one of those areas identified on the rpc of where the rpc said we don't want things here so clearly right. if our map says we don't want things here and that's where it's proposed then we would probably say no but yeah um i mean it, it just kind of brings up a whole other issue uh, number of issues that I won't go into, but the the biggest one being this that we could never do the 500 kW. I mean the one megawatt project again because the it's limited to 500 kW, and we've already maxed out as a municipality. We've mm -hmm. maxed out that. Which um, so anyway, there are there are quite a few stumbling blocks. But the so it sounds as if they, what they were trying to do is really put some teeth into this idea of preferred sites which didn't yeah. really have teeth before it was sort of yeah maybe on. that was kind of a last minute change and that was why it kind of came up but it did surprise a lot of people yeah, um I bet it did. and that's why there's now a, kind of a big push to kind of get preferred status approval on some of these projects so. are there any other items of general interest before we move to item three um, I could mention that um, I'm going to be joining the Regional Plan Subcommittee of the Regional Planning Commission. So, um, yes. So. Planning is there Commission a timeline for that commission. process? Is there a what? A timeline for that process? Uh, I think it's going to be like a two-year appointment. But I did ask that if I wanted to hand over Montpelier's representation to someone else, would they be forced on the subcommittee? And they said no. Okay. Uh, that person would be able to choose their own subcommittee if that happens. Uh, but Kirby, tell me again what committee? It's the regional plan committee. So there's so there's a regional pl there's the regional plan committee. There's things like the energy committee, brownfields, project review, yeah. and a few other subcommittees. So the regional plan itself, of course, is the guiding document, just like our plan is for Montpelier. Um, and it's actually, I, I, this, is, this is one that I kind of wanted to do out of all the choices because it's, I think knowing about that will help yeah. know where to put Montpelier in the context of it all. Um, so I would like to know more about what's all in the regional plan. Um, and I know that through our zoning and through our planning efforts recently, what Montpelier's kind of planning to do has changed a little bit as far as, um, like, for instance, developing out towards Saban's Pasture and things like that and down Berry Street are uh, 
um, kind of new developments um, planning wise. So making sure the regional plan reflects what we want to do in Montpelier, I think will be something thing on my mind. Will they get that specific on the regional plan? I mean, within the city limits? That's well, my understanding. Oh, really? It is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and does this mean you're switching committees? No, it, it's, it's a but subcommittee of the regional. Now. He wanted to dive in. <laughs> what? <laughs> he wanted to dive in. <laughs> well, I was one of the only regional planning commission members that wasn't on a oh. subcommittee. I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, Montpelier is kind of prolific, so people noticed. Good for you. Yeah. Okay. So, might be some news in the future about that. Thank you. All right, well, we've got a lot to cover, so I'm going to move to item four, which is general business. Please do that. Would you tell me your name again? Cause Joe, that's a lot. I thought so, Joe. I didn't want to call you Ralph, well, so. Fine. Well, that was actually exactly where I was going. So, Joe, the next item is for members of the public to offer comments if the comments are about something that's not already on the agenda. No, and I was just kind of curious on the zoning fixes because I saw that. And I was just, so I wanted to see what you guys were going to be discussing. Oh, okay, great. Did you get a copy of the punch list that Mike? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's what we're going to be discussing. Pretty expensive. Yeah. I don't think you're going to cover it all today. Well, um, we are going surprised. to be. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, we agreed at the last meeting. Um, some of some of the items on there have been added from a prior draft that Mike had previously sent us, okay. and we didn't have an opportunity to even begin or to, to take up. Um, but we did agree at the last meeting that the items that were on that prior draft, we would we would do sort of a consent. Uh, approach to it so they'd be deemed approved unless somebody raised um, desire to discuss that item. And I have a few that I, I know I would like to raise. Uh, yeah. But just so you're aware, we're going to be going through it pretty quickly. Okay. Yeah, most of it didn't raise any time. Okay. Um, all right. So we have the uh, and then, okay, so that's item four. Now, item five is the city plan update discussion. Um, Mike, you put together a list of the committees and potential chapters. Yeah. Is in this um, pile of documents. I have it right here if you want to look on mine. So not all of these, I just put them all down, even though some of them may not, like the Housing Trust Fund Committee, we probably won't actually invite. They just do the Housing Trust Fund. But I tried to put the primary one as the first one across, so Land Use Planning Commission. The ones with the stars are required chapters under state law. So transportation would be the Transportation Infrastructure Committee. We also have a separate Complete Streets Committee. but. Probably the transportation infrastructure would be the primary. Utilities and facilities, we have a CIP committee, natural resources, we have the conservation commission. CIP? Um, capital improvement plan. So they usually just meet to approve the capital budget. So is your recommendation that we invite all of these committees and let them self-select whether they would come or? Um, what are your thoughts? At this point, I think we can, I mean, really it comes down to what we want to try to do. At a certain point, there is a line down here. I think community services make sense to be in there. Mm -hmm. After that, these were just other potential chapters that I've seen. Public safety isn't actually a required chapter, but we could. We don't really have a committee for them. Health, I've seen communities use health, resilience, arts, governance, so also as chapters. Flood resilience section two. Resilience, it needs to be a chapter that's discussed, but it, um, but it can be discussed under natural resources or a couple other places as well. Um, it does have to be, but some places have called it out as, a, as its own chapter as well. And, and depending on the community, you could probably find other chapters that could go in there. But 
these were the primary ones because we kind of wanted to be able to interchangeably go between chapters and committees and committees and chapters to kind of be able to say, you know, like Historic Preservation Commission is kind of responsible for the implementation of the Historic Preservation Chapter. And we kind of can, Housing Task Force would be responsible for Housing MEAC and Energy Committee, and it'll help us to be able to develop more uh, strategic plan because we've got people who are going to implement them. The only one that kind of gets a little bit more cluttered are like economic development, has a couple of, there are a couple of different economic groups, mm -hmm. the community services, we kind of have Yeah, I noticed boards. Parks Commission is under community services and not natural resources, but they might have interests that... They're, they were a funny a one, they of, kind of overlap yeah. depending on how they see themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, is parks really part of RAC or is parks part of Conservation Commission? Yep. yep. I think the economic development, in a way, relates to all the other committees. And I, I don't think it should just be people that worry about money. I think it should have a broader... Approach. Well, we're, I mean, do we need to specify which chapter each of these groups is responsible for? Could we just invite them and they could uh, offer their ideas not tied to a particular chapter? I. It depends how you want to structure the the plan. Ultimately, mm -hmm. um, if we're going to have an economic development chapter then the question will still come back, who, who would be responsible for the economic development chapter if it's not the Montpelier Development Corp or Montpelier Alive? I mean, there may be aspects that aren't covered by these other topics, but I think Kim's point is well taken that these other chapters should be incorporating that concept. And that's going to be true for a lot of chapters, actually. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure Barb can comment on, you know, energy. Um, you know, how do you accomplish your energy goal if you're not talking about making houses more energy efficient? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or how do you meet your energy goal without discussing transportation? So I think each one of these is going to kind of have an overlap yeah. to another place. Historic preservation and housing um, you know, if you've got historic neighborhoods as we do, you know, I think these two are going to overlap in a number of ways. Uh, and I think the question comes up, where are they overlapping and where are they potentially in conflict? Um, you know, we hope there aren't a lot of conflicts, but they're going to come up from time to time. I agree at this point there's no good reason to pigeonhole anyone, though. We can hear what the ideas are. I think it's good for the Planning Commission to know what these chapters are going to be so that our minds are there, but no reason to, uh, with this meeting coming up, to have the other it, committees trying to cram their ideas into a certain category at this point. I think it depends what we're asking them to bring. If it's just they're bringing their personal goals of what they're trying to accomplish, you know, their three main goals they're trying to accomplish in the next five to eight years, then yeah. Then we can start to. I wrote ten years. Or ten change. years. We could change it. Yeah, I uh -huh. haven't. I I didn't get a chance to to kind of get through that one. Um, so I'm counting nineteen committees, which if you if we do three slides in three minutes each committee and there's no added time for transition, which of course we will have, that comes to fifty seven minutes. So it should be about right for a two hour. Painting with all the, with our intros. And that's what I'm thinking. What, what about the ones on the back? Those are potential chapters. Yeah. Chapters, right, those but we don't have anybody addressing those. Well, there, I just started to, to make sure I put down some things because the, the chapters with the stars are the ones that are required. And right. And the question starts coming up are there other chapters? I mean, you know, we don't talk about community servants. Services. We don't talk about arts. Arts could be under 
arts could be put under something community else. Community services or economic development. I mean, I think these are just ideas. Governance oh. could be a chapter mm -hmm. on its own. Are, do, are those required? Those aren't. That's not a required no, chapter. No, those are required. No. Wow. Okay. So you, yeah. So if you look at the ones with asterisks. Right. Not. Right. I'm, that's. But I was surprised those weren't. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Well, I think those issues, those topics, need to be sure that they're covered and people have a, an opportunity to respond to them. I think we have plenty of time for that. And, and if people notion. come up with other ones that, yeah. you know, maybe John Do we have any idea how many committees are likely to report? I'm guessing we aren't going to get 19, up? right? You're not going to get that. Right. I mean, housing, like I said, even housing trust fund could probably come off. They're just a once a year group that meets. Montpelier Business Association probably wouldn't, but be good if they Development did. Corp would. Housing, yeah. Housing Trust Fund has different members than the task force, right? Yes. I mean, that's actually one where I'm, it might be worth it to go ahead and ask them to see what, what ideas exist since they're different people thinking about housing. Yeah, I think it's reasonable to invite all of them. I imagine we'll have a few that don't participate. And I don't think we need to tell them which section we think they're under. I think that's a good point we can say. From your committee's perspective, what's most important to you? Yeah, and then if we want to group them together later, like say, hey, Parks and Conservation, if you're going to work together on the Natural Resources section, you guys should be doing that collaboratively if you both want to be part of that. But I don't think we need that does parks? Meeting. Where does Parks see themselves? Do they see which themselves as a it, natural yeah. resources protection parks, or do they see themselves as the provider of recreational resources parks. Well, they may have multiple roles. Or they may, yeah, they may be on both. They would have, uh -huh. they would have yeah. contributions yeah. to both. Yeah. yeah, I don't see why we limit them. Um, my concern is we're just, we could get this letter out tomorrow, but it's, it's going to be, you know, we have July 23rd is our date, and it's just really not a lot of time mm -hmm. to give these committees. Um, and part of that, we've just been a little bit delayed by various scheduling issues on our part so I'm wondering maybe we want to see if we can get a later date from the high school yeah I can do that is there a I, was, I was thinking the same thing but didn't want to be like the only person who says that <laughs> well it'd be uh, helpful <laughs> if some of these groups if they only meet once a month they might not have a meeting between they them we can move That's it the to the end of time. August I know it's, it feels really far away but at some point they start school at the Potentially near the end of August. It'll be nighttime time now. I know, but we I think we don't want to overlap with that yeah. if we can help it. Yeah. But part of what I think would be helpful is do we have what's the sense of our full timeline for this? I'm having a I, we're sort of talking about it pretty generally, but we're not really saying, okay, if we have we're deciding we're gonna have this done in twenty twenty and here then we can work our way back to what we need to get done and when that would be helpful. And yeah, and still, I think that was an open done. question that we still had was, you know, we kind of we kind of got a green light, although we didn't, oddly, we didn't end up making the priority list for city council. It, not that it was removed, it just, if you look at the city council's priorities, master plan isn't, or city plan isn't one of them. Um, but I think it had been discussed a lot as to, in, in, you know, reinforce that they think it's an important effort for us to work on. This is our goals for 2018, right? Not goals for the next five years or something, right? Yes, but when we were looking to get priorities from City Council on where staff would be dedicating their time, and get some boards sort of hiding underneath uh -huh. things oh, yeah. there, we didn't, you know, doing this work isn't there, but that's, I don't think that, um, well, that's one we of got the, the support. We really wanted to try to lean on the committees themselves to do a lot of this work, and giving them this guidance early on will probably facilitate that better. So that was sort of the thought. Yeah. Was the more we can do this work without leaning on staff. Yep. And trying to bite off small pieces rather than try to boot do, you know, I think a lot of times we try to make these giant things where we're going to do everything and plan everything. If we can get you know, a set of three, three to five goals from each community and be able, or each committee and be able to build a transportation plan and a housing plan 
knowing it's not as perhaps as, as deep as we would like to get with complete discussion of all the programs and projects and everything that we want to try to accomplish um, because it would just take us too long to completely do it but if we did you know kind of good cut on everybody and got the priorities talked about then we can go back over time and keep digging a little deeper into housing and you know not just the top three things but we're actually doing a lot of things every day to advance our housing projects and let's make sure we kind of outline and discuss them and start tweaking what programs and projects need to get tweaked so what are thoughts on having two of these similar meetings it's like just adding another later date um, we might have some takers on the next meeting and we already have the space scheduled for them mm -hmm. we wouldn't have to worry about the time crunch as much basically just use two planning commission meetings in a row or maybe two spread out a month um, so and, and if we get any early takers then maybe we could just go ahead and use that time and and if we don't then have a regular meeting it would shorten the meeting and give people a little bit more mm -hmm. flexible time if we're not limiting each so you're saying half the committees might show up for the first meeting mm -hmm. and half for the second I mean, well, the disadvantage is they won't hear right. all of the goals all the committees yeah uh -huh. unless unless I mean they could still come as members of the public mm -hmm. um, but they might not even have formulated their goals I mean I think it's good to have some pressure on them um, to get their goals formulated but you're right that if it's possible they might have only one meeting between now is there anybody who would not have a meeting between now I don't know everybody's schedules probably yeah, that's a lot it's the summer yeah, but most committees still Most of them will meet at least once a month. Yeah. The question is. Wait, where and when during the month, yeah. I mean, if we could move it to August 13th or August 27th. I mean, August 13th would be preferable. I was planning to go away on the 27th. But <laughs> I can move those plans around if needed. I think I'd go for two meetings. I, I recognize your objection, but I think Kirby has a good idea. Some people might be able to present in a month. And I think if people who are working for a later could come and hear it, conscientious they might come to the first meeting and say oh that's what this is all about and do a better job on the second one and I once made a study of how to say something in a minute because I was doing a TV advertisement for myself <laughs> and it's amazing what you can say in a minute but it'll take you three hours to prepare it. And uh, I don't want to have a lot of people come and say, oh, we've only got three minutes. I haven't done this, I haven't done that. And so it's two minutes have gone by and you get a minute of substance. And I think the very few people have the discipline of saying something in three minutes. It's a very disciplined behavior. I think meeting twice is not do any harm and might do some good. Because there will be people that have thought about it. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be the people that make other people think about it. So but you're suggesting... Your, your letter would have to say... Don't worry, guys, if you can't make it, you can <laughs> get another shot. The letter will already ask for, if you, ha if you have any presentation materials, please send them ahead. They could also, it could also say, please tell us which of the two dates you would like to attend. 
think worst case scenario is we get no takers on the July date. Yeah, that's that's the danger. You get us. To me, you get saying, the energy what the hell is this sure. all about? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, um, how we long know that the Energy Committee and the Housing Committee um, and potentially the Conservation Commission. How long were the presentations to okay. Council about what they were, what each of the committees is doing, and setting priorities? Well, it was for each department. Um, I mean, the tree board did it. We did it. Um, Energy committee did it. You mean the recent one? Yeah. About what are? Yeah, what, are there was a there? limitation on those too, wasn't no, there? No, there wasn't. Yeah, we. I was asked for the planning department and planning commission to be ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think that's probably what we were trying to do with the energy committee too. So. Anyway, so some of the committees will already sort of have been thinking about what their priorities are mm -hmm. and um, in order to communicate those to the, um, to the council. So it might not be that much more for them to be able to put those together. And we're saying three-minute presentations. Yeah, well, we can say whatever we want. I mean, it's well, yeah, I mean, out there. We, could we give a little bit? John is pushing for three minutes, three slides, three minutes. Oh, we could go through a lot more slides than in three minutes than three could of them. Some people could. Count. Could you query people <laughs> to see who might be able to present on the twenty third? Well, we. Can, I mean, the letter. I think we'll, we'll the letter we'll send it out and we'll just ask for an RSVP and. So, Barbara, are you in support of this idea of two? I think that it, I mean I think that Ashley might help. I I really like the idea of everybody being in the room at the same time. But I think people could get overwhelmed because uh, we were afraid of how many committees there were. Mm -hmm. um, we could ask that everyone attend both meetings, but that they would only present at one meeting. Mm -hmm. We could drop it to two minutes. No, no, we can't <laughs> drop it to two minutes. No, because at that point it takes us a lot longer to set up than it does to, to present. Oh, well, no, no, Stephanie's going to take care of all of that. Yeah, I'm gonna, they're going to send me content and I'm going to say, no, you have to cut. And you're going to tell them what order. What no, order. No, 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 no. Not so you, you're going to have it all um, That was set. the idea, was to have it pre-set. Yeah. yeah. But I, for whatever it's worth, I would significantly prefer that we get everyone at one meeting. And it's because of that be reason. And if we even, if we set up the first, we can say, if you cannot, if you absolutely can't make this work, we can have some sort of follow-up to get a couple of people. If we have committees that can't make the first one, we can have a second one. But I think to set it up as pick one, we're going to get, I don't know, it, you don't know what we'll get. And I'd prefer if we can at least try to get everyone, hey, this is the day. Mm -hmm. If you really can't make it, we'll have this little smaller follow-up just so they have a backup. But I'd, I'd really like to get everyone at the same time. What are your thoughts, John? Yeah, that's good. I, I don't know what you're responding to. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> With the question of having everybody there at once, or is having giving people the option of doing two meetings? He knows. He's just uh, ideally. <laughs> he knows all the things that are out there. What do you prefer? Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, I like I like the idea of doing it all at once. Uh, we'd have to be really organized, um, but if that can't happen. Then I don't have like a strong preference, I guess. I mean, I think that the reason why we haven't actually held the meeting or scheduled it and sent a letter out inviting people is because we're trying to organize it so that it can't be the most productive amount of use of our time and everybody else's time. So I, I guess my preference, I have a strong preference to have everybody at the meeting. I probably all gathered that. I hear that there's some ideas that we could have two meetings and that would be productive and I am open to that of course. Um, in August. Yeah I think it'll have to be August right? If we're going to do one meeting it would have to be in August. Well, what if we say okay. our first meeting in August and then the back, we can have a backup for those who can't make it so it's the second meeting in August. But don't tell them that it's a backup. <laughs> right but like if you absolutely can't make this day let us know and then, or then we can work with them but try to get them at that first one if we yeah. can. Yeah, and not tell them about the backup. We don't yeah. have to tell them. No yeah. backup. Yeah, just say, 
Or they could send, like, comments or something if they want. It'll all be, like, recorded, right? Yeah, it'll just yeah. be at the, right. at the high school, so... And yeah, if, if they can't attend, they could send, here are our slides, can someone just read what's on here, at least say these things? Or, it, if, you know, there are a number too. of people who are in each of the committees. Nobody can attend on yeah. that day. <laughs> so it's not like we're just asking one person. One person. Yeah, yeah, we only want one person. Um, and and it does not, like, not have to be the chair. It's not like we're like going anywhere. Or like we'll never talk to them again. <laughs> the idea was like we bring everyone together, and like obviously there'll be a lot of work to be done after. Um, so August thirteenth would be your preference. I can try to book it in the morning. I don't know how responsive the uh, yep. city that aspect of the city. What day of the week is that? It's a. It's during our regular meeting time. Monday. Monday evening. Evening, yeah. That's what we were doing. I'll, I'll let you know as soon as I Thanks. am able to confirm. Yeah, well, I have some tweaks to do on this letter now again. This is what, it's fine. That's what it's <laughs> all just about. Just a few minor <laughs> tweaks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So is everyone okay with that idea? Let's mm -hmm. just push it out of bed. When I, when I when I threw that one idea out, it, it, it is a balance between what's more important that we get as much information as possible, which I think there's an argument that two meetings would help with that, mm -hmm. or is it most important to have all of the people working on various things in the city to really hear each other? And it sounds like that is a priority. And That's I'd where I that. think a lot of the value in this meeting is. I think, that, I think the council kind of supportive of having that all committees meeting idea. Okay, let's yeah. do it. Okay. Yeah. Um, we can move forward with sending out a public survey before that meeting happens if we want to do that. And I, I know, Stephanie, you sent something sent to John. A, and yeah, me, just the two of you sent And I didn't get to go through it in detail. But. It's brief. It's okay. a first opener, really quick, easy to answer questions that I think would be a good start to get some broad outreach and then we can send. We can write up a nice little front porch forum post to go with it, but yeah, if you want to look at it, let me know what you think. So why don't we take a look at it, give her comments, and then you could send it to the entire commission, and we'll take it up at the next meeting. Okay. Discuss it at the next meeting. That'll be soon enough at the next meeting. I think so. Okay. Especially if we're moving this out. It's a, all right. Um, anything have, else? Oh, John. I was going to say, I haven't heard back from Seth. I emailed it. Since the last meeting again, it hasn't replied. Yeah, it's been, we had a number of hiccups, so he may have gotten sidetracked. You may need to resend it to him. We had the phone systems go down, and then we installed new Wi Fi, so. He's been busy with the Wi Fi. He's been busy, so. New password spending. Ah. Um, well, that's a great segue because it reminds me that we wanted to post something online explain what the terms evolve, maintain, transform mean. And if we don't have Seth's contact info, or if we don't have his ear, we, I don't know exactly oh, how we Oh, we can post this. stuff online. That's, that, that is an issue. I think we just, it's whether we need to set up any Google Drive, Google account stuff to do it. Well, I, ideally, well, yeah, I guess we could start by having this just on the, web, on the city's website. Uh, and then maybe, and then by the time the meeting occurs, we should definitely have a Google Drive set up so we can walk everyone through what we're, we're expecting with that and we're hoping to do. Mm -hmm. so, um, so one of the, the items we discussed uh, about the letter at the last meeting was how um, the draft says you should come to this all-committee kickoff meeting and identify aspects of the city that you want to see evolve maintain and transform. What do those terms mean? They're not defined. Should we write a whole more explanation in the letter? We all decided, no, let's let's point to a document, a guidance document. So I asked Mike um, what he thought would be a good document to point to, and I think this, this is an excerpt from That's an excerpt from this guy, which I forgot how big it was, so. And this is, John, this was your baby at some point? Or? Yeah, I did a lot of this. Certainly was where I first 
came across the, the concept of the maintain, evolve, transform. I think it's a, it's a helpful. Um, but you wrote up something as well, right? I did, but I didn't. It was kind of a quick, it, it hadn't really been kind of pulled together. I mean, I could certainly go through and do a little bit more work on that to, to clean it up, because it was more of a set of notes and thoughts that kind of came together that I could share with you know, folks like you guys in the Planning Commission and a few other commissions to kind of start to have that discussion. But it really wasn't cleaned up for kind of as in the same way that this is. If we're looking at just the concepts of maintain, evolve, transform, this does a good job of having that discussion. That other piece I had put together, which had more thoughts, really then took it to another level where we went from maintain, evolve, transform is how we do our goals. But then once we get to the second level of how to do the strategic planning, then we start getting into, you know, more, you know, are we continuing? Are we amending? Are we doing something new? Are we doing policies or plans or permits or we had a number of different things that I don't think we want to overwhelm the committees with at this point. What we really want them thinking about is the high level maintain, evolve, transform, and there'll be other pieces that we'll throw at them afterwards. And um, do you think by the, that meeting we could def work in at least put creating like the boxes or the definitions of what we want so maybe we can present it then so that they're all working towards filling out or yeah, using so the I same think like schema? We would need that. you on that because we, we would want it to be, we want to give them the information, we want to give them instructions for how to give the information in a way that works for you, ultimately. Mm -hmm. so, we and so we'll have to do that relatively soon if we're going to give them mm -hmm. a heads up on mm -hmm. being ready for the meeting. Well, I think, I think that this gives them the concepts and then at the beginning of the meeting we would present this detail mm -hmm. and say, you know, the concepts that you're going to give us today um, will facilitate discussion, but what we'll want to be working toward is put, fitting it into this framework, and that's what you'd be explaining. So I don't think you need to do it before the meeting. It might be too much for them I to think, take in. Yeah, I think it will be. And I, I, So I looked at this when I was thinking about putting together a survey, and I started with defining these three things and trying to explain that to the public first, and then I realized that's not, that doesn't really make sense because then I have to clarify to them, here's the difference between evolve and transform, and now you have to understand it before you can respond to it, which it's easier to just say, what do you like about Montpelier mm -hmm. right now? What is it here that's great that you really love? And we could change, we can take that and put it into the structure, mm -hmm. but especially for the public, I don't think it's, I don't think it makes sense. Mm -hmm. to, I don't think they need to know specifically what these terms are to be able to respond. It's, it's yeah. easier if they don't mm -hmm. need that. For the committees, I think, we can explain it to them, but sending it out ahead of time and making them respond to it with what they submit might be more more challenging. We could explain it at the beginning, but I think if we're, and it's also, this is very specific to map, like to the land use map, mm -hmm. within yes. how, it's how it's discussed here, and not everything that these committees come up with or that the chapters come up with are necessarily a mapped fix, and it, it might be hard for people to think that way if they have like a, a general feeling of we should have more parks, that doesn't necessarily relate to a map yet, and it could. Mm -hmm. But I'm, that was part of my concern with throwing the terms at people now mm -hmm. and not explaining it to them at the meeting instead, which I think would be easier. Do you feel like this document is too confusing and we should get rid of using those terms in the letter and just call them goals again? Or I, I, it's, it's helpful, but if we're not explaining it, I think Especially between how do you what's the difference between evolve and transform? I think you can read it and figure it out, but I think it's I don't think it'll be innately clear to people what would those it, distinctions would are. Would it help if for our part in our intro of the evening talk start talking about that and take that opportunity to teach them about it? So the so that would mean the presentations they bring don't aren't necessarily put in this context, but we could give them a primer on it, so for further future talks. I'm right. saying that, but there's only going to be one representative of these committees, right. so maybe teaching one person from the committee isn't even 
Well, I think they'd be able to bring it back. Yeah, that's, that's sort of so. the idea. Is that you're, you're sending a rep from your committee who can bring information back? It'll be a game of telephone, though. Right. But, <laughs> but they're going to need a reference to but something so like we'll have to have some handouts. Yeah, and, stuff, and, and things that could, we can present. And so you're saying not put this reference into the letter? I think we could if they want more information. We could post it and say they can look at it. But I don't. I wouldn't expect people to read it and be able to define mm. what they want in these terms mm -hmm. before we get a chance to talk to them about it. Yeah, it might be best to keep it simple, and I'm not sure like what value, even if they got this down like perfectly, we wouldn't necessarily get a whole lot of value out of categorizing it right now, but if we do present this, as well as I think just as important, importantly like setting the, defining how we want them to communicate those ideas and, and what's a uh, target versus a policy or an action. Um, we can kind of probably bundle this with, with those ideas and leave them with resources to understand that as opposed to presenting it at a high level but then giving them something to sit down with. John, you are very quickly making it clear that you are the best person to present <laughs> this high level, these high-level concepts at that meeting, um, and I don't know if you'd be open to that. <laughs> but I, I'm just thinking, like explaining all this and putting it all together um, as a concept is, is going to be very challenging. And, and I think I don't know. We can continue talking about that as we get closer to the meeting. How it makes sense to do this. I don't want to saddle you with all of the work of doing the opening presentation, but maybe if there's a way for you to have a, a role to kind of explain the difference between evolve and transform and how that translates. Um, would be, would yeah, be I don't think explaining it is the challenge. It's deciding what we're <laughs> what we're going to do. Like okay. what they. Yeah. Well, that's Mike's. There, yeah, there. I we're think back on you, Mike. Yeah, and sometimes I think it just comes down to an iterative process sometimes to, to try to ask them to just do it and I think Barb can attest that just giving and having people work on it it's it's hard it really is the when you can sit down and and work on them then you can start to get there it's not one you're going to kind of get right off the bat in a presentation or reading the material it's one that really when we actually want to get the transportation committee to get us the stuff. I've got to kind of sit down with them to help them work through their thinking process because everybody's going to gravitate to the easy stuff, and if we're going to get stuff mm -hmm. done, then we've got to keep bringing them back to well. That's nice, but encouraging bike paths isn't going to get us any bike paths. So let's get back to <laughs> encourage. Just not. going and saying one of our goals is to have more bike paths and have you this know, many more this bike many paths. More, more bike paths or prioritizing bike routes along arterials and collector roads is, is going to help us to establish a better work plan and better CIP. And anybody's welcome to take that. I printed out one copy just if somebody was interested. Well, we can leave it in your office. It's the same one that's online, The right? same one that's yeah. online, yeah. Um, but this step two piece came out of there, so. Well, with all that in mind, how do how does the group feel about me asking for committees to present goals, <laughs> go back to goals, and then saying if you want to know more about how this process, the co concepts that will unfold in this process, you can look at this document, and we will be discussing in this in more detail at the meeting. I so agree with Stephanie. I don't want to constrict people. Just give us your ideas and we'll work on it. Or maybe like, step. yeah, or maybe just like what's different about Montpelier in 10 years and what's the same? Like we're trying to get at a sense of change, which can be more helpful than, you know, what are your goals? And then it's just like, then it's something vague and flowery. What do you want to see in Montpelier in 10 or 20 years? Yeah. I would be happy if John and Leslie sat down and crafted this letter. And just asking for well, goals is appropriate based on my experience yeah. with the committee. Because we can go and tell them what we're going to be working with you going forward over the next 
six months, 12 months, 18 months is to help come up with strategies and tasks for accomplishing those goals. But what we really want you as committees to think about are, you know, what is it you want to see in those next, you know, as John said, five, 10, 10 years? What do you want to see that stay the same? What do you want to see that's changed? Stephanie said that she already put this terminology into um, but user then friendly. It. I started to, but then I took it out because I didn't uh, want to have yeah. to explain it to the general public. If you have that language that you use, like a, if it's a, like a plain language short and succinct version of this, then you I could see. send it to Leslie. She but might I can update that. Or if you, I mean, you might have a better handle on it. Otherwise, I can, yeah. I can it's probably it better if the drafter of this document doesn't summarize it, because we'll see how much it <laughs> actually... Okay, so I'll send out a summary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you already started, you have a draft letter pretty much oh, done. Oh, yeah. Done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just ready yeah, to hit right. the send button, just wait. <laughs> right. No, I mean, that's what this process is all about, is, I mean, I'm not... Once you write something, you're like, oh, I have to change it again, I have to change it again, but it's fine. I'm not that attached to this writing. I just want to get it right. I want to make sure that we're thoughtful about our process, and that's what this is all about. So, Once we get, once the letter goes out, we've kind of committed ourselves to what we're doing, so yeah. might as well make sure we know exactly what we want to do. So you are saying that you'll ask for goals. Is that's that what right? it sounds like. Um, are we, are we, were we concerned sorry. that goals is doesn't provide enough guidance? It's too open-ended? Is I that think, what the concern was? I think originally I think that was the concern, but I think in retrospect that from my standpoint that goals is really going to, to draw the most yeah. um, illustrative pieces out. My concern is that we get uh, like targets, which don't really t necessarily tell us a whole lot. They, they'll we'll get like metrics, but yeah, it's we like, want to build we, 250 like, housing units is what you'll get, and not housing is more affordable in ten, 10 years from now, housing is more affordable um, and is more available than it is today. Is um, conceptual goals, I mean, yeah. if we call it conceptual goals, does that help prevent? Because people, some people will want to work that way, and so they'll actually have to work back to what their aspiration is from the metric. So. Just maybe the numbers aren't, you know, I don't know. Did you think the numbers, if they came in with a target and said we want to build 500 units in the next 10 years, is that a good thing? We could translate that, though. We'd be right. like, well, yeah. you oh. want to do that because you want to see more affordable housing, right? Is that the goal? And we can talk it through. Yeah. Yeah, so I think we could. As they long could as they come with something. Something. <laughs> says, yes. This is what we're trying to accomplish over the next 10 years as the right. Housing Committee, and this is what we're trying to accomplish over the next 10 years as the Energy Committee. Okay. Right. And whatever they come with isn't going to be final. This is just the first brush, so it's going to, these things are going to change. Okay. And the formatting is not, always, not going to be the same between each group, and that's, I think that's okay. And they only have two minutes anyway. <laughs> right. You really <laughs> shrink it every time we talk about it. <laughs> All right, I think we've got enough. I mean, I can, between Stephanie, John, and me, we can, and Kirby's uh, booking expertise, I think we can. Um, Mike, is there any money for us to do refreshments? Uh, I'm sh <laughs> sure I could, in a pinch. We'll probably get more people to come. If Especially starting at 6, was that it? Or your letter, or your original letter started at six. The, I can, the 23rd booking six was, eight, was six to nine. I had, yeah, I'd book that six to nine. Do we want to stay with that? Yeah. Move it back to August 13th, is what I heard? Yeah, I mean, if we could get a few pizzas. If we're, seltzer, yeah, if we're good for, you know, as long as I'm not ordering it, I'm just coming up with the money, I can, I can make the money show up. Okay. <laughs> All right. I've got budgets. I can <laughs> okay. you know, get a, put a couple hundred dollars. You can squeeze that. a pizza out of it? Yep, I can squeeze pizzas right. out of it. Um, okay, so moving on from item five, unless I hear anything else. We'll move to item six, which is why Joe's here. <laughs> just to wake you up out there. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it's just a long day. Um, no, I understand. <laughs> I understand. A long, long weekend. So item six is receive punch list of zoning fixes if we get review. 
So I'm going to ask Mike to kick us off. I will, before he does that, I will just note um, we had received a draft of this a couple weeks ago, and we agreed that we would take it up as sort of a consent review. So anything that people don't raise as a concern, we would deem the staff recommendation approved. Um, Mike has added to that draft since that time. So I, I keep accepting permits and we keep getting stuff. So yep. we keep tweaking things. Um, so should we go through it more carefully then? Well, we, we will go through the ones that weren't already on the draft carefully. But have the ones that were already on the draft changed? Well, I don't think I changed. You just what added to was the bottom. In. I right? think I just added. Well, I actually added in, so they weren't added to the bottom, okay. unfortunately. I so you're going to have to highlight kind them. Kind of inserted them. Um, so. Um, I should have changed my date on the top. What was the first one that you added? I, I, it may be right at the start at one and two. I'd have, I didn't grab my old list. Does anyone have the old list or just I have it on, on my the computer. new one? Okay. Because some of these I can go through relatively. Number quick. one just number two. one is the same. I didn't mark it as something I needed to discuss. Did anybody else? Okay. Same with number two. Yep. Just uh, a couple of no, cleanup no pieces. Need. Number four, can, same. Can I just ask? So it, it its recommendation is, I think, a general statement about the regulatory construction under state law would be more appropriate. So we're going to rely on Mike to put together a statement like that on number two. Is that what's in the next box? It's yeah, it's in the next box. I didn't. I wasn't always perfect about keeping comments and recommendations used both kind of okay. flip them back and forth but in this case the recommend recommended change is actually in the second column okay yeah so the third one was to strike the information bullet from under one 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 zero zero four yeah yeah and that's okay to then number four is new yes that one was new we we've had a project on this where a question came up on paving or repaving. Um, what we had were applications that have come in and somebody wanted to uh, pave a, a set of gravel paths. And there were extensive amount of gravel paths and they were going to pave them. And the question was, did that need a zoning permit? It wasn't clear in our rules of the definition of development whether it would, um, should the paving of an unpaved parking lot require a zoning permit or should the paving of these unpaved paths. My opinion is I would not regulate paving and repaving of already impervious surfaces, but I figured that's a question. But is gravel an impervious right. Gravel surface. is considered impervious. Seriously? Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Because water doesn't necessarily drain off it in the same way that it drains off paving. Yeah, that was my thought as well. I wouldn't consider that. Oh. How the stormwater regs go. Okay, so I'm not wrong. All right, uh, that was what I thought was that. I'm pretty. I'm fairly certain gravel is impervious. So the underlying question is: impervious, would, I mean. would there? So, if there's going to be permitting, it means that there will be instances in which we say that no, you can't pave that thing that used to be gravel or the thing that's currently gravel. So that's really the question before us right now. Yes, yeah, is there any like standard or what? Are we just there isn't any for standard for the sake of getting a permit. It, it may, in this case, be just a, a sake of getting a permit, a permit for getting this, the sake of getting a permit. The Wait. issue that sometimes come in, comes in is once you once you trip in. For example, if you're uh, a commercial and once you've tripped into paving and it says yes, you're going to need a permit. Now you're it's development of something that's not a single or two family, so now you've tripped into site plan, which puts you into a minor site plan, which means you may be tripped into doing other things beyond just because you're paving an impervious. But maybe those were things that should be done. It's, yeah, yeah. it's a policy question of whether, you know, we get into that extent of 
I think if you're going to pave an uh, impervious sur surface, you should get a permit. But there's no, we have no regulations about it. We're just having someone get a piece of paper for this. Well, well potentially. This isn't anything I've studied, but I thought there was a lot of regulations and so forth about changing impervious surfaces and requires a lot of demonstration that it isn't harmful downstream. Wouldn't that That's when the, the jurisdiction is triggered. You know, increase state. phosphorus and the rest of it. But this is about not changing impervious, the amount of impervious. If, it, if it's already impervious, go ahead and pave it. Yes, yeah, that's not what we're looking at. Again, I guess I would bring up the point about that the drainage is not necessarily going to happen the same off of those two surfaces. Right. And so if there's an abutting neighbor who is suddenly going to get inundated by water coming off of pavement, I thought th think that there should be some kind of review. So the update is to clarify whether yeah, at this point, at this point, it's just an that's administrative question. Yeah, basically, that's I the mean, question. I thought we were going to do a comprehensive stormwater review as part of the stormwater master plan. We're still waiting to get the data layer from um, the spatial analyst lab. So this would be appropriate to revisit at that point, I think. And well, we still need a, a definition at this point. We are we've gotten two applications. No, I, I in understand the four that, but I mean the policy question. Of, I mean, I think. What's our default until we get to right? The if we think about this as something kind of more temporary in terms, it might be easier for us to. I don't think we need to make a long-term decision about how we're going to handle um, repaving impervious services. I mean, I, I I'm comfortable accepting uh, an exemption for that, with exemption the understanding for that for repave redeveloping services Including because that. I know that we're going to be revisiting all but of Barbara those. tells me there's a difference in impervious services. Well, for one, yeah, I mean, for one thing, gravel moves around a lot more than, than pavement does. And so in terms of how drainage happens off of it can alter significantly over the course of its life. So, Mike, are you able to just interpret it without a clarification of the definition? Uh, knowing that, it, let's say look, we all agree that it's not development at this point unless we say otherwise. My concern would be to go in and change it to clarify it now yeah. to what you're saying, but then when we do stormwater, is it, is it, are we going to be haunted by that change mm -hmm. when, we, when we go to work later? We can, well, I mean, we can always change it later. What we have right now are just questions that have come up. And what we have basically done is defaulted by looking to the fact that you, the, the fill requirement that's in here goes and says if you're going to excavate fill more than 30 cubic yards on a property, then you need a permit. And therefore, we simply applied that <coughs> to the paving. So if your two inch coat will require more than 30 cubic yards of material then you need to get a permit and if it's you know less than that then you don't and so for a thousand feet of five foot wide path two inches thick we can calculate it up and see how many cubic yards that is and if it exceeds 30 cubic yards then you need to get a permit and if it's less it just requires more work than if it's you know the question just came up why are we even doing this considering we have no review standards, it's just whether they're getting a piece of paper or not. And okay. that was, so from an administrative standpoint, if we had a determination that said, no, repaving isn't, then we could, when we get the phone calls, just push them off. I'm fine with clarifying that it's not development. If you're that's repaving easy. something that's already impervious. If it's already impervious. We have impervious requirements, so if you're gonna pave something new, then we need a permit because we have to determine whether you already have exceeded your impervious cover yeah, right. <coughs> percentages. So in storm, in stormwater rules, the regs, at least some of the old ones, I'm not, 
most of the work I do is appeals of things that are old, so the new rules I don't know yet <laughs> until they get appealed. But the old rules, the concept was that um, there's another definition for redevelopment and there's another set of standards for that. So it's different from new development. Um, so just put it out there. Your original point was uh, paving versus repaving. Um, and then later you expanded it to what about paving an unpaved area? So yeah, there's, there, there's both. We've had repaving as a question. Somebody wants to repave their driveway. Do they need a permit? In that case, I mean, I would say that they wouldn't need a permit because it's already existing. But there's no modification happening. Um, I guess I would just have a hard time with the changing the gravel to pavement. Hold, hold on. Let's take a look. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Barb, what are you suggesting instead then? Are you suggesting breaking it up into two different? Right. I mean, if you're repaving an already paved surface, then that shouldn't require a permit. Because so by paved, you mean cement or tarmac, right? Not gravel. I mean, right. that's the piece that right. I think. Yeah, I, when pavement you say paved, that by definition okay. is an, uh, is a hard surface that is, well, maybe we need a, a definition, I'm not sure, um, but to my mind, a paved surface is something that is a hard surface, and if you're matching what was already there, then it shouldn't require a permit. What about sure pack? So, yeah, but sure pack, you can move, it moves around, you know? Right. It's, so it's, not, like it's not there for permanently, like pavement is, so. I think that's my point. But you're not suggesting that we create a way to, like, to regulate that. You're just saying that that will then pull you into the review process that Mike mentioned that um, could have other things to look right. at. Right. More, a more careful look at it then. If you're going to take a, a non-paved surface and pave it then it's going to need more review. So permit's probably never going to be denied based on paving gravel, but it can mean that, Assuming that other things that you're doing are getting looked at? Yeah. Is that, like right, is that right, Mike? Is that what you property. said? Yes, it could bring in other, depending on, and some of this is going to depend on how some of these other mm -hmm. things get to. Because we've got some other issues later on, especially regarding landscaping that are serious issues that need to get fixed. So getting drawn into site plan could draw you into a, you know, you want to pave your driveway, now you need $15,000 worth of landscaping and <laughs> cutting down trees in your front yard. And I mean, in general. Cutting down your two big trees so you can replace them with three small trees <laughs> because you don't have the right number of trees. In general, from a system. Oh, we'll get to the landscaping things. Trust me, yeah. the landscaping scrolls are said, really, really bad. You said those were the big ones. Yeah. It's really bad. Um, I guess, in general, from a sustainability standpoint, I'd like to minimize the amount of new pavement in the city. As, and um, so uh, that's sort of where I start. We'll need a clear definition of pavement then if we, if we go that way. Bituminous pavement? Very few people use concrete in Vermont. And I'm not, I'm not sure we have, uh, or at least I haven't necessarily seen a lot of information that suggests gravel would be better because of the sediment that comes off of it. Yeah, it's, but again, what I'm saying before, before is that it's not a completely stable surface. The surface changes depending on traffic. Um, but, you know, if you want to take a vote on it, um, Well, I don't Leslie. know what we're voting on, to be honest. I'm trying to... The question is whether gravel's an impervious surface. Yeah, I'm trying to find it in the stormwater rule. I don't know if it's... I know I've always treated gravel as impervious. And what's the definition of gravel? Is it sure pack <laughs> or is it stone? Maybe we need some further clarification before deciding on this one. Okay, yeah. Let's I mean, ultimately, the question still comes down to whether we wanted to... Impervious surface means surface composed of material that impedes or prevents the natural infiltration of water to the soil, but not limited to rooftops, streets, driveways, sidewalks, walkways, patios, and similar hard surface as to 
uh, areas whether constructed of concrete, asphalt, stone, brick, gravel, or compacted earth unless they are specifically designed and constructed and maintained to be pervious. So. Hmm. Well, given that definition, I would support your my opinion sentence at the top. Do not regulate paving or repaving of already impervious surfaces. And all Barb's it's saying it's is defining that they already don't allow infiltration. Barb's Barb's just talking about doing a gravel carve out. That paving, right. paving over gravel. So yeah, because or, you know, if I felt confident that once you put pavement down, it didn't move around and create new drainage patterns, then I'd say fine. Here's but, a stormwater yeah. rule: impervious surface means those man-made surfaces, including but not limited to paved and unpaved roads, parking areas. So unpaved roads. Right? Mm -hmm. Parking areas, roofs, driveways, and walkways from which precipitation runs off rather than infiltrates. So the question is whether gravel infiltrates, whether precipitation can infiltrate in gravel, or any other surface for that matter, under this rule. What were you reading, Mike? That was our definition of zoning. in the zoning. Well, that's more comprehensive, and I would use it to say it's impervious. Already, go ahead and pave it. If it's not, get a permit. Did I hear you say that your concern was the, like the permanence of it? More that uh, once you pave something, generally yeah. it, the drainage patterns will not change significantly. Whereas with with uh, gravel, they can change over time, particularly after mud season. Um, so you could end up with pockets of materials in gravel um, that you wouldn't necessarily have that might change the drainage patterns off of the gravel from what they would have been under paving. In fact, I used to live on a dirt road and um, so-called compacted gravel and I, I preferred it because I knew that in the spring during mud season I had a chance to get up the hill because I could go from basically from divot to divot Whereas if it was paved, I probably wouldn't have been able to because of the... It, mm -hmm. so, so they're significantly different surfaces, even if they're not necessarily allowing infiltration. But we don't have to beat this one anymore. Um, what do folks want to do? So do I have a proposal? Impervious surfaces except gravel. You're going to have to change the definition. Okay, so that's a motion. Is going to count that as a motion? Okay. Do I have a second? Well, I, I mean, could I offer a modification? Yeah, absolutely. Have just second <laughs> um, could we just say repaving existing bituminous surfaces? Okay, that's, that's straight. Would not require a permit. And then you'll continue to go through that longer process you define if it is gravel. Right? But if it's porous concrete. Have you found a porous concrete one that actually works that doesn't fill fill up with? Um, yeah. And yeah, that's intended to be. It's impervious. Per the, impervious. Well, it's pervious, it's right. intended to be pervious. <laughs> impervious. So it doesn't count as impervious. The Gris Griswold parking lot. Could we? Well, could I would we accept it? your suggestion <laughs> as a modification. Okay, then I will second. All right. We have a motion anyhow. Is it possible? Is it possible to offer a further modification? <laughs> <laughs> Just for the draft for the drafting sake, and I God, I do regret how much time this is taking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that you that you that you phrase this as defined it as my proposed, except that what you just said is not or is development. I'm, I'm lost. Is, I'll either, I mean, I can either put it under 1004 under the definition of development, or I can put it under the 1101 exemptions from development. You can put it in one side or the other, and I, mean, I can figure gonna, out where to do it. I just need to know what the policy was. From this, we might want to modify the impervious surface definition, because it has gravel specifically <laughs> called out in there. 
Well, this one's just it's looking candy. at does re, does the repaving of paved surfaces need right a permit? That's and paving really the question. Paving, paving is different than an service. impervious surface, does right? Not. Yeah, as long as we don't include the word impervious in here, then... <laughs> then we don't trip our own then definition. Then we're not going to trip up our own definition. We're just then... Paving of an unpaved surface would require a permit. So either I would say that the... I, I would have to probably phrase it in one, one side or the other. That would go through and say the paving would require a permit. Paving of unpaved surfaces would require a permit. The repaving of paved surfaces would not. Would right, the repaving of paved surfaces would not. And if that's the policy, then that's what. We just needed to know which side, because we were just making up rules. That we, needed, we needed an answer, so we made up an answer. And if we've got a chance to work on it, then we'll. Okay, so you had the motion by Kim do we have any, uh, are we amended, in the discussion part? Mm -hmm. Was that John? Are we in the discussion part yet? Yeah, yeah, amended mm -hmm. and seconded by Barr. Now discussion, yes. Do we have any criteria around it? I don't know. I mean, it already, as we said, we've Sorry. already determined it. One zero zero four. I wonder if it's even still the same number. I don't know as we would have specific standards on that. It doesn't look like bituminous is in the regulation. You were reading our definition under paving? No, it's impervious surface. Impervious surface. There's a definition for. But the section that we're looking at, 1004, which is on page 1-1, one mm -hmm. seems to be a standalone 1004.a, unless specifically exempted in these regulations, see Chapter 110. All land development in the city of Montpelier requires a zoning permit issued in accordance with these regulations. And then there's some italics that say land development means, and I think this is where paving piece comes in, it means constructing, installing, demolishing, reconstructing, converting, structurally altering, relocating, or enlarging any structure, mining, excavating, filling or grading land, removing natural woody vegetation from within riparian buffers, changing or extending the use of land or a structure, adjusting or relocating the boundary between two lots, or dividing a lot into two or more lots. So, so paving and repaving technically doesn't actually trigger, trigger any of those, if except it's, if you look at it as filling or grading of land, so yeah. because it technically adds to the land and we were like well that's why we went to the next page which looks at the 30 cubic yards and said well we'll just use that if you're over 30 cubic yards of pavement then you need a permit and if you're under 30 cubic yards then you don't that sounds good that's a lot of pavement q8 is it? it's a lot i mean cubic is pretty big the the 30 cubic yards is does that specify excavating 30 cubic yards without any reference to the word filling? What's it the is, the reference that comes in on this side is actually the. So this is an exemption, exemption section? Yes, that you 7A, have? the movement of not more than 30 cubic yards of material or normal maintenance for normal maintenance of roads, driveways, parking areas, yards, or for personal and community gardens. I read that to mean movement that, of something that's already existing on the property to somewhere else. Yes, so bringing oh. in, and that was what we had circled, why we said 
the movement meant that's different than trucking in th uh, yeah. a certain amount of cubic yards. And then there's also, with a lot of these, there's also, to a certain extent, some amount of remove and replace that sometimes comes in if you're going to do some work. So a couple of them, a couple of times we got caught up being lawyers. Mm -hmm got caught up on the words you know we got caught up on movement it doesn't say bringing in doesn't say results in the, the you know the bringing in or the removal of 30 cubic yards it was the movement of it so so I'm I'm kind of back where Kirby was saying do we actually need to document anything in the regs themselves here, or if it, we can just give you guidance on our intent for interpretation? Based on the exemption language. If you give us what your intent is, we may go back and reread to see if there's a word that needs to be changed. As we said, like the word movement. Mm -hmm. The word movement. You know, if you guys go and say, we would like to see permits issued for paving of unpaved <coughs> surfaces, <coughs> then then we can start moving in that direction to start tweaking some language for some public hearings. And if the decision is no, we don't care if you're paving an already impervious surface, then that makes things obviously a lot easier to, to clean up in that direction. So if we kind of know. So I think the discussion then becomes how, do you, how does everyone feel about this exemption for the movement of material that's less than 30 cubic yards? Right? That's really where we're honing in on. That's the only one we have in the ordinance now. Right. But I think driveways typically are less than 30 cubic yards, right? That's what you come across? Yes. Mike? Uh, we, we actually exceeded yeah, it with the one application. It seems like a lot. Four, four bank, yeah. You exceeded it with four one application, trips. but you thought because it's repaving. It was Probably paving. Should. It was paving gravel paths um, on a property that already has uh, gravel paths. They have a lot of gravel paths, and they were going to pave them. And so, because it was fifteen hundred feet, five feet, six feet wide, a couple inches of pavement, it actually came out to like forty-one cubic yards or forty cubic yards. So they did have to come in to get permits. Well, hearing that, it's in keeping with what Barb would want a review to trigger anyway. So I think that it's mm -hmm. actually structured in a way that. I think I think you do need to clarify if you're going to apply movement the way you've been doing it. I think, it, I think you are right to to want some clarity in there to support your interpretation. Because I, I would read movement as it's, um, the plainer meaning of that would mean to move it from something from the, from that's already on the property, like excavating. Um, but you're interpreting it to also and to also include bringing bringing it in, bringing yeah. it in. So if you were paving it, yeah, if you were so no, yeah, so if you were paving or even repaving, that would it that would trigger. Uh, needing a permit in excess of 20 cubic yards in in actually depending on how you're defining movement if you interpret movement as Kirby's interpreting movement that's just on site moving from corner A to corner B yeah that's the exemption is just moving on site as opposed to actually trucking in asphalt which would not be an exempt activity which would mean you would but it's also not defined as development anyway is it 
depending on how, and, and that was really where we wanted to just, if we got an understanding of what everybody intended, then we would know, do we add paving to the definition of land development? Because if we want to regulate paving, then we should add it to filling, grading, paving, because other regulations do say the word paving. I have seen that in the definition specifically called out. If we don't want to regulate that type of paving, then, then we could work it into here. So that was really why, and as I said, we had two applications. One which was a repaving of a driveway, fairly simple project that we deemed to be exempt. Um, and then we had another one which we ruled was not because it was more than 30 cubic yards, but we just wanted to, if we know what the policy intent is, then we can go through and kind of tweak the rules to fit. It seems like this it's working or it makes sense, right? Like we're not regulating and repaving things, and we are when you're changing stormwater, like when you're filling and grading land. So, yeah, and the two that we've done, it sounds like you guys have agreed that we made the right call. And I think the question is, as we start getting to some of these other ones, if somebody is, if, if these folks that just paved the gravel path come back to repave that gravel path, and they're trucking in 30 cubic yards to repave, should that have a permit? That's... But to repave it with that's that's, that's the question. That's all we, we no, all no. we care about is knowing no, are we getting a per, are we making them get a permit or not? And it's but the likelihood of them adding thirty cubic yards to an already paved surface. We just had one the, to pave it. To, no, 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 to an already paved surface. I yeah. thought that was your supposition. Yeah, but if somebody came in that exact project that just got approval to pave those paths was 40 cubic yards. So if they come back two years from now and repave it. What if, the, actually I think there's a flaw in this approach, yeah. and that's if that project you're talking about that used 40 cubic yards, uh, if, we, if we draw a line at 30, then they have to get a permit, but, if, but they, could also, they could do 20 yards this year and then 20 yards next year and would yeah. not have to get a permit. Yeah. yeah. And so that's, it seems like we're actually, that's not a great, way to come down on this. I think deciding whether paving is development is one threshold question. Because yeah. if it's not, then they don't need a permit in either case. Yeah, which is kind of why I tried to put this in here. You know, sh clarification on paving and repaving is really, you know, should re repaving, regardless of the amount, you know, do we want to be regulating the repaving of already paved? And what about paving of unpaved areas? Assuming that unpaved area is um, already impervious, you know, paving of a gravel area. So we have a motion out there. <laughs> <laughs> which was just, which was say repaving would be exempt, repaving of paved would be exempt, but paving of impervious would require a permit. Any other discussion on that before we vote? Is that still only if it's over 30 cubic yards? I don't think it was ever triggered by a volume. Right. This particular motion was not tied to a volume no, amount. But, in the, but if you update that language, does it still, would they still apply for that exemption? Would they still qualify for that exemption if it was less than 30 cubic yards? That's an, the exemption still stands, right? Right, yeah, I mean, I can tweak the exemption. I think what we would go back is to clarify the, the definition of, or what the word movement is, to right. be clear to meet what we're intending. I don't think movement does. So. I mean, because the exemption that's here is, is the minor grading, filling, excavation, which is not part of an approved construction activity. It is not commercial mining, extraction, or quarrying that results in the movement of 30 cubic yards of material, normal maintenance of roads, parking areas, yards, personal, and provides appropriate measures to prevent stormwater runoff by adversely impacting nearby properties, public infrastructure, and downstream water bodies. Of course, to get the exemption, we've got to review kind of one of those <laughs> yeah, you have to circular prove ones, but that's the exemption in its entirety. 
I'm s right. Anything else on the motion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed? Uh, aye. And you're abstaining? I, uh, I'll, uh, I guess I'll oppose. Okay, so yeah. the motion carries. 3-2. Uh, yeah, so it was You're Kim. voting in favor. It's 0-3-2. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I opposed. I put her in that spot. <laughs> what a nice guy. What a nice guy. I don't want to deal with permits on a small level, so I'm going to oppose. Um, which means it doesn't carry. Sorry, I forgot that we needed four. That's all right. So well, we'll you, keep this on a no? list of things to continue I'm voting to... No. I'm voting no, but we, yes, I'm open to, yeah, we should really visit it. We'll put this under the no changes at this time and... I, I just, I voted no because of John's, the same as when John had voiced a concern about permitting and... I'm also worried about... Um, a slippery slope of calling gravel impervious. I'd be far more concerned about taking impervious, actual impervious, and having someone put gravel on it and then tell us that it's impervious. But we weren't discussing, the motion didn't discuss pervious versus impervious. It didn't define it. Yeah. So it wasn't we moved addressing going it. going based on our, the previous definition, which says gravel is impervious. Right. But the motion was on paving. Right. And we could clarify to asphalt paving if you felt like Well, all I can say is I'm sorry you brought this up, Mike. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, we, 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 almost all of these have come up as a result of very specific applications that yeah. have come in the door, and we were left with the question of, you know, Somebody's asked, they're paving the parking lot, do no, they need I, a permit? I was joking. You were clearly yeah. right to bring it up. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> not an easy <laughs> fix. It's not an easy one. Um, so everything else from part one was on the prior draft, and I didn't have any other comments of, of issues. So unless anybody else has any, I mean, we can at least get part one done and move on to deal with the rest of our agenda for tonight. Um, I had a comment on six, where I, I thought we didn't want people to need to get permits for fences. Uh, they do need, there's some permits for fences, but what we had were people who were coming in. So fences need Permits in in design review. Design review. People were coming in arguing that they didn't. Need and to get well, a people were coming in that they it didn't need fence permits anywhere in the city. I thought that's what we enacted. I don't believe we do because we've got specific standards in chapter three ten. 320, you know, 310. Well, so in... So 3101 talks about fences and walls, where the locations are allowed to be, the orientation of them, what fences in front wall, uh, in the front yards can't be more than four and a half feet tall, side yards can't be more than six feet tall. So, I mean, if you back up, though, to Chapter 220, the overlay zoning districts, in the applicability section or the provision 2201.C, applicability. Within the design control overlay district, no structure including fences and above ground storage tanks may be erected, reconstructed, substantially altered, restored, moved, or demolished without review of the design plans by the design review committee and approval of the design plans by the DRB. And then in 101B, it says except within design control, the zoning permit is not required for these things. It seems pretty where clear. Does, where does the design review committee get criteria on fences? Where Mike was pointing, where, I guess. Where does it say fences are exempt in 101B? It says except, so they're not exempt in design review, but they are outside. That's the way no, I'm reading it. No, they're, they're actually, all, all fences need permits. 
that's a good idea. But I think because that's we've got that's over here in three one zero one. We have a whole set of standards on fences. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that they need permit. That all areas well, need a permit. What's the section, Mike? Three one zero one talks about the rules for fences. I don't think we have exemptions for fences. And those are the height requirements. Yeah, the heights, where they're located, what materials they can be made of. I mean, it's something that can be entertained as, you know, we're looking at rules if people want to propose that fences don't need permits. John, where were you? Well, that's what the uh, number six is proposing to clarify. Oh. Right. Yeah, and, and what that was talking about was any accessory structure ancillary to a residential use that is less than 100 square feet in floor area, less than 10 feet in height. So people who wanted to put in fences that were in violation to 3101 were saying, those rules don't apply to me because I don't need a permit in the first place. Because of the any accessory structure yeah. provision in this section up front. I mean, then I would recommend a modifying 2201.C, which is in the, dis the, zone, the design control overlay district saying that the piece that I just read, saying no structure including fences and above ground storage tanks may be erected, reconstructed, just say no structure may be erected. Why, why are we calling out fences in particular there? Because it implies that that's the only place they're required for a permit. I honestly didn't remember where we landed on whether we were, were requiring permits for fences. And I don't have strong feelings about it either way. But I think that having a uh, having it called out there in particular kind of implies that it would be exempt in other situations. So I might recommend modifying that. So that's three. That's two two zero one. But anyway. So I, I don't care either way we could certainly I've certainly gone through and seen where fences less than a certain height were exempt I think in Barry City fences less than six feet were exempt mm -hmm. or five feet were exempt didn't need permits for shorter fences I don't mind if we do require permits I just think we should be it's a little unclear yeah and in this so. case a lot of these things here are a lot less policy stuff than than it is for us just so we know yeah. how to interpret them so as far as number six John, was that just seeking clarification on what John, on um, whether fences were required to get permits or not? Because you were asking about six, but you weren't, you didn't have any issue with the change, right? You just wanted to know whether fences needed to get permits, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay. Well, where are we on this? Do fences need permits or not? Fences, at this point, yes, fences need permits. I think it should stay that way. Okay. Okay. So we're good with six, right? So we're going to change the word structure to building? Yes. Next time someone tries to argue to you that a fence is a structure, you definitely laugh. It is a structure, it is a structure. But it's not a building. building. Not a building. In the context of where it talks about square yes. footage and stuff, though. Yeah, on. where in its context, that was, that was the argument we made, and we said, if you want to appeal my decision, you can. But at the same time, because I was doing a punch list, I felt it's smart to make that quick little change. Anything else with section one? Okay. Hearing none, we'll deem the rest of these approved and we'll take up, we'll pick up here part two, part two of the next meeting. That gives you something, Mike. Yeah, no, that's uh, good. And I think part two, I think some of these will go a little bit quicker. And I think it was nice to see that out of part two, which is the zoning map, so far we have no, have had no recommendations to 
change any of the zoning districts. No more new districts. No new districts, no, new no changes of no stuff that have come ones. through. And this, this. Most of the stuff is really. This map small. and this email, these are, we can take these up at the next meeting. Yep. Okay. Okay. Hang on to these and bring them back next time. Yeah, Meredith gave me one very at the last second, which is why you have an email which has a couple extra comments. Okay. That at a certain point I said, that's it, I'm not adding any more. <laughs> the matrix right. is closed. Can I get a hard copy of that's approved by the council of the zoning? Of the zoning? Yeah. Yeah. Ashley, could I get one too? Do you want, pa do you want paper copy? Yeah, mine, because I'm using an old one. Whole sections have been stricken. Any other? No, I can use things are changed by the council. I'll I'll take one. I don't have a laptop or a tablet right now. Okay. Three hole punched or stapled? Three hole punched, please. Punched, punched. Punched. All right. Three, three whole it's like a waiter up there. <laughs> really? He's taking our order. I know. Thank you, Mike. Thanks. That's yeah. great. I don't feel so, like being very good millennial. While right he's now. doing that, um, <laughs> item seven, consider minutes from June 11th. Well, I'll go back and look at the May 14th minutes at the next meeting. We didn't warn them for this meeting, so we'll we still have those that we need to approve. But for now, let's let's look at June 11th. Any? Oh. Um, do I have a motion? To approve these minutes. So moved. Thank you, John. Second? Second. Okay. Stephanie seconds. Um, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. okay. Well, the minutes from June 11th have been approved unanimously. And there's one more item, which is adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Okay, we have it from Kim. Second? Second. It's a non-debatable motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.